Now, what are we looking at here? All right, what we're actually looking at here is pancreatic cancer tumors, a couple of different lines of pancreatic cancer tumors. All right, now what happens is you notice that so you see a control group which aligns the tends to go straight up, and you see the scorbate, otherwise known as pharmacological vitamin C. You notice how one it tends to rise a little bit, and the other one it pretty much stays steady across the 14-day period of time. That is how powerful intravenous vitamin C is in regard to tough to treat pancreatic cancer tumor lines. Now let's get right into the study. Public citation title was as follows, or is as follows, why a high dose vitamin C kills cancer cells. To quote, vitamin C has a patchy history as a cancer therapy. This is what the researchers are saying. But researchers at the University of Iowa believe that that is because it's often been used in a way that guarantees failure by bypassing num normal gut metabolism and excretion pathways they're able to create blood levels of vitamin C, which are 100 to 500 times higher than what's normally seen with oral ingestion. And I mean, this is large amounts. You'll see how much in a second. It is a super high concentration of blood that is crucial to vitamin C's ability to attack cancer cells. How does exactly does vitamin C attack cancer cells? We'd be kind of surprised. It's actually through the production of something called hydrogen peroxide to follow. The study shows that vitamin C breaks down easily generating Hydrogen peroxide, a so-called reactive oxygen species that could damage tissue and DNA. And that's kind of weird when you think about it. Here you have vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, at the same time can actually work as a prooxidant, or I should say as almost like a radical. So as follows, the study also shows that tumor cells, now here's the caveat, normal cells normally have higher levels of this enzyme called catalase, which can easily break down high levels of hydrogen peroxide albeit a lot of cancer cell lines cannot produce large enough amounts of catalase to handle hydrogen peroxide, therefore being damaged one way or the other and falling apart. As follows, the study shows that tumor cells are much less capable of removing the damage in hydrogen peroxide than normal cells. The study shows that tumor cells with low levels of catalase enzyme activity are much less capable of removing hydrogen peroxide than normal cells. Other things can remove hydrogen peroxide as well, but we'll go that towards the end. And are much more susceptible to damage and death when exposed to high doses of vitamin C. All right, that's enough of a prelude. Let's go right into the study parameters as follows. Citation title, if you want to bring to your oncologist for further research, tumor cells have decreased the ability to metabolize H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, implications for pharmacological ascorbate in cancer therapy. DOI as follows, funding, yeah, a lot of people, study participants both in culture and in animal, which is important to me, study length, the mice were randomized, which is important also. The mice were treated with IP ascorbate, intravenous ascorbate, at four grams a kilogram twice daily for two weeks. Tumors were measured on day three, seven, 10, and 14, following the first treatment with ascorbate. All right, I'll give you an idea how much vitamin C that is intravenous. For a 150 pound individual, that'd be about 272 grams or about 9.59 ounces of ascorbate vitamin C twice daily. Not just once, so 9.59 ounces twice daily. Dosage of material, as we said, ascorbate, five different pancreatic cancer cell lines they utilized it with. Results were as follows. Vitamin C breaks down to generate hydrogen peroxide which can damage tissue and DNA. The new study shows that tumor cells with low levels of catalase enzyme activity are much less capable of removing hydrogen peroxide than normal cells and are much more susceptible to damage and death when they are exposed to high levels of vitamin C. Yet, leave your normal cells, which can handle catalase or produce catalase just fine, intact, undamaged. What an incredible, incredible way of treating cancer, only damaging the tumor or the cancer cells while leaving your normal cells intact, untouched, non-toxic. But to go a little bit further into the details of the study, which is kind of a few interesting notes. There's so much I would love to cover in this study, but I only have so much time to do within, or within, I should say, the five minute limit. But other interesting notes are as follows. For example, thiol compounds, such as cysteine and acetylcysteine and glutathione, as well as pyruvate, and even certain iron compounds will react directly with hydrogen peroxide, thereby removing it. Now, an interesting thing too is because you think iron and vitamin C or iron and copper could be reactive species. But check this out, as far as just an interesting note. Catalytic metals such as iron and copper can serve as catalysts for the oxidation of ascorbate. 
The same metals can also react with H2O2. Thus, in cell culture experiments, higher levels of extracellular iron can actually protect cells from the detrimental effects of extracellular H2O2, which is just an amazing you know, paradox in regard to vitamin iron, I should say, and vitamin C per se, uh, or hydrogen peroxide. But incredible, vitamin C potentially could be a very powerful tool and the use of treating, in this case, was pancreatic cancer cell lines, which are not easy to treat. However, again, it's preliminary research, it's an animal model, has to be eventually carried out to humans, but in the meantime, vitamin C is looking like it may have the potential to be a powerful tool intravenously in the treatment or safe treatment of certain cancers. Again, I hope you find this information of use. As always, and I look forward to seeing you all again in seven days. Catch you in bed. Bye.